passenger uh, came here and did a horrendous thing. And, uh, we had taken all the reasonable uh, precautions we could. Uh, how could we feel guilt about something we really had nothing to do with? That was the voice of the mayor of Dallas. The America beyond his city is obsessed now by a new industry, the Kennedy Memorial Industry, that spews a profitable and morbid flood of records and books and pictures and postcards. But does Dallas remember? Does it want to remember? Peter Woods reports. A year ago, President John F. Kennedy, with his wife Jacqueline, was making this drive through Dallas on his way to an opening ceremony on the edge of the city. It was very much a day like this, warm sunshine with a temperature in the 70s not a cloud in the sky. But in one minute from now, John Kennedy would be lying dying from an assassin's bullet. A beautiful young wife would lose her husband, America would lose her dynamic leader, the world would lose a symbol of youth and vigor, and the very course of history would be altered for all time. Out of Elm Street into the open space opposite the Texas School Book Depository, an anonymous stretch of roadway which was to be transformed into a spot where history was written punctuated by the crack of three rifle shots from this window. A moment of stunned silence and then a desperate dash to hospital, but it was already too late. A year ago, the square was the scene of stunned shock after the presidential car had raced off towards the hospital. People who had seen it all happen couldn't believe that it had happened. The horror, the grief, the disbelief everyone in Dealey Plaza felt that afternoon was reflected in the face and voice of one eyewitness. He was coming down the street and my five-year-old boy and myself were by ourselves on the grass there on Palmer Street and I asked Joe to wave to him and Joe waved and I waved in the man. That's all right, sir. You were ahead, sir. Because he was waving back. He was, he was, the shot rang out and he slumped down in the seat and his wife reached up toward him and he was slumping down and the second shot went off and just knock them down. Two things strike you when you come to Dallas a year later. The first is that there's nothing at all here in Dealey Plaza to denote the fact that one of the world's great men died here. There's no monument, there's not even a plaque. People used to put flowers down here, but they don't even do that anymore. And the second point which is brought home when you talk to the people here in Dallas a year later is that although this is the anniversary of President Kennedy's death and no doubt it'll be marked throughout the world, here in Dallas, where it all happened, very few people feel that there's any point in commemorating this day as a special day. Well, I think it's all best forgotten because, well, he was a great man. But so was Lincoln. And he's gone. We can't bring him back. And I really believe that it would be best that it is forgotten. Well, I think that he was a very wonderful man, but I don't see any need in uh, going on and, and uh, you know, uh, having any more to say about it. He's dead, he's gone, and he had his memories. But he was a good man, but I think it's best that it should all be forgotten and just let it, you know, rest. I think it should be forgotten. But surely a man like well, Kennedy dying here, it's a year ago now. Well, that's true, but I think that it keeps her upset. The way I, the way I feel about it. I think it's best to forget all about it. Wipe it so it won't be brought up. Keep it going all the time. I think it's best for the city of Dallas just to wipe the slate clean. After the assassination, sensation hunters were offering ten pounds a night for the rooms which Lee Oswald rented in a lodging house on the edge of the city. Today, the lodging house has several rooms to rent, among them Oswald's. The local cinema, where Oswald was cornered after killing a policeman soon after the assassination, did a roaring trade. Now business is back to normal, with the next attraction setting an ironic note. The dingy little strip club run by Jack Ruby, the man who killed the president's assassin, has been closed for nearly a year now. Ruby himself, under sentence of death, is in the county jail awaiting the hearing of his appeal. Mayor Johnson, who has come into office in the last year, was to have officially welcomed President Kennedy to Dallas. I talked to him about Dallas today. We have some scars, of course, uh, but they're not indelible. Uh, a year ago, we were deep in the tragedy of having lost our president, as any American city would be, 
and as indeed all were, and many around the world. But, of course, since the event happened here, it, uh, the climate was a little, little more uh, grief-stricken here. Uh, what happened has forced us to look inward and see if uh, uh, there are indeed things about the city that we could make better. And we've tried hard to do that. And I think if one can say that anything good comes of a tragic event of this sort, uh, this must be what has happened. Because we have now come to the point where we're pinpointing our goals and uh, our plans to achieve them, and we're trying to be not the biggest, not the richest, uh, not any other kind of city except the best we know how to make it in, in the broadest and best.